And she goes, look at that black mask. I'm like, what? Where? And I look over. It's holy shit. And I had my camera. I said, pop, 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 pop. pop. <laughs> Welcome to Your Ghost Stories. This is a podcast that will send shivers down your spine and ignite your imagination with tales of haunted places, restless spirits and the unknown. In each episode, we speak with people from around the world who tell us about their chilling encounters. Get ready to embrace the darkness, the laughter and immerse yourself in real life ghost stories. So Jamie. Nigel. What kind of horse do ghosts ride? I don't know, you tell me. A nightmare. Oh, you're hilarious. Why... Did the ghost walk into the bar? I don't know. Why did he walk into the bar? For the booze. (laughs) Yeah, I think we should probably get on with the show now. Just a quick note before we start this episode. We're sorry if the audio isn't up to scratch on this. We've tried our best to save it in every way we can. So please just bear with us and we hope you enjoy this episode. So hi, Gary and Ashley, and thank you so much for joining us on the show. So you're our very first non-British guests. Uh, We've spoken briefly on social media, Gary, and I understand you're a paranormal investigator and have a company called Ingalls Park Paranormal. Uh, I see you guys get around a lot and visit a ton of cool places. So we're super excited to have you here and to hear more. So before we get into some stories, please give us a brief introduction into who you both are, where you're from, and what Ingalls Park Paranormal are all about. Well, we're uh, actually, this is my niece. We're a team. Uh, shit, we, we're paranormal investigators for a while now. Um, actually, what we do is, um, we ain't like your normal paranormal investigators, all right? They go out, at those hunters, whatever you want to call them, they go out and they like, stir up trouble, this and that, and they're looking at places to where, I mean, it's common sense already how many people already investigated it. Well, you know, so like my thing is, is that I go investigate places and when I go in there, we go in blind. I don't want to know nothing about it because I can go in there and I can tell you 10, 15 minutes after I'm in there, what's in there, everything, you know, but actually, you know, what we do is we go help people. We do house investigation, businesses. Um, We go to cemeteries, help the dead move on if they can. And it's a good feeling that you get when you get to cross people over too, man. That is oh, a yeah. beautiful mm-hmm. thing right That's there. Awesome. You know, and then you help people, you know. Now, see, I ain't saying nothing bad about any uh, ghost hunters or nothing like that, but I noticed, okay, we were at uh, Old Joliet Prison, and you had ghost adventures came in there, and ghost hunters, and fear factor, or the fuck it was, okay? <laughs> and um, these, this, all they're doing is just chasing ghosts, man. They didn't give them no who's in there, nothing. Yeah, no answers. Nothing. Man, I, me and Ashley walk in there, and I told her, I said, I can tell you right now what's going on right here, here, and here. So by the sounds of it, uh, Gary, you you have a, a sixth sense. You can, you know, sense the dead and the things around you. Have you always had that since kind of you were born? Well, you know, I really didn't realize it until, you know, this house right here is our home house, you know, like where I grew up at since I was like five. And yeah, see, I was probably about 12, 11, 12. And the shapeshifter that's in this house here, man, it's a lady, you know, she actually shows herself as a, you know, in a Victorian outfit and all that. I got a picture of it, of her, you know, by my dad, like two months before he died. But, um, man, she turned herself into a fucking clown dude with teeth and shit. Man, that thing was chasing me and shit. You're probably thinking, no way. But for real, it was chasing me and shit, man. And I went off, I put some covers over my head. I was young, man. And, um. I'm like praying, get away, get away, dog. And uh, so I looked, it was gone, okay? So then years down the road, I used to tease my nieces about this, you know, you know that old man, old lady here, you know. So, you know, but then my dad passed away 15 years ago. It was pretty quiet, actually. You know, little things happened, but that ain't not, you know. After he passed away, the lady started uh, showing herself more and um, actually doing more stuff. And... She mimicked my stepdaughter to a T, dude, and she wasn't even here. I mean, it just goes on and on and on, you know, doing this stuff here, like all these investigations that we've done and this and that, man. I, I don't know, man. I, I think I've seen it all. 
I mean, we went up against demons, this, that, you name it, man. I always had the gift, you know, that's one thing. You got to have the gift. And I got a few different ones to where I can tell if they're by me, if they're bad, you know. Um, hey, we have a good time. We laugh. We have a good time. But then, hey, I'll tell you what, I'll get that damn job done right there where we don't even have to come back at nighttime doing no nighttime investigations. We be joking around yeah. and stuff, but we still get shit done. Yeah, it's done, dude. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, you see, like, a lot of people where they got to do their, their nighttime investigation. Oh, we got to go for a nighttime investigation and all that. Well, dude, if you were good enough, you wouldn't have to, man. The way that we do things is different than other people. I actually, we talk to the spirits and uh, this and that. I don't care if they're bad or good, okay? No. You talk to them, you got to think about it. They're human beings. They were human just like you and I. Right. They're just dead. They get, they're right there, man. You know what I'm saying? Some know that they're dead. Some don't. Yeah, it just goes on. You know, some crossover, some don't, whatever. But they're right there, man. So it's no different than them talking and us talking like we are right now. A lot of people do this for entertainment, but it sounds like you guys have a deeper meaning. You guys want to help people and to help people cross over to the other side, you know, help spirits and help living people. What kind of draws you towards that? What makes you, um, you know, want, want to help? Hmm. That's easy, man. God. See, I had, uh, when we started this and all that, um, you know, did it, you know, this and that, okay. But then I dropped dead, man, in front of my house. This would be almost like September 23rd. It'd be three years. And I backed down my driveway and I put in drive. I literally dropped dead for 26 minutes in front of my house, man. And they're like, how the fuck are you even alive, dude? They're like, oh, you know, they tried everything, man. They're zapping me this, that, that, this. I, there's no coming back. There's no coming back, man. And my kids were out there. So that's the only reason why they kept going. And, um, they finally did that, you know, adrenaline shot in me and they got me, but I don't remember none of it. I remember just waking up in a hospital, like, what the fuck am I doing here? You know? But they said, hey, dude, you were dead for 26 minutes. And now that 26 minutes I was dead, I didn't see nothing. It was all black. Yeah. So you some don't know, you know. Some people see things, some people don't. Yeah. And then, you know, and then like all these uh, investigations, okay, we'll go back to that and whatever. Even in the cemeteries, where, wherever we go, wherever I go, wherever the case may be. When you talk to these souls, man, you can tell by the way they act. And you can tell if they're lying or not. I mean, because a lot of them are freaking liars, dude. They love to lie. And so, they love swearing it. Yeah, so you got to throw yeah. them off when you're talking to them. You know, that's what I do. But, yeah, it, it's a, it's this amazing thing to talk to them and, you know, this and that. Yeah, so they far, love this means. <laughs> Man, we could be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles away from home and they'd be saying Gary. Yeah, they know our hey, name. Gary, you know, hey, Ray Ashley, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty cool, actually. Help me. Yeah, help <laughs> me. Now, you know, we did talk to a bunch of celebrities, too. Oh, yeah. Al Capone. Al Capone. <laughs> Al Capone. That's, we talked to him twice. President Grant. We talked to President Grant, his wife. We talked to President Reagan, Rockefeller. President mm -hmm. Garfield, fucking Elliot Ness, uh, Abraham Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln, yeah, Lincoln, Lincoln's wife. Um, do you believe that you are genuinely connecting with the spirits of these celebrities? Because, like you said a few minutes ago, um, they like to kind of take the piss and mimic and tease you, think they're funny, kind of thing. So, so do you think they could be mimicking these celebrities, or do you think you really had that connection with those guys? No, nah, man, I got the connection because I think we really had the connection yeah, with them. Because Grant, okay, now, okay, I used to do the Civil War reenacting yeah, for nine right. years, man. This was on the southern side, the south side, okay, because you got your north and south, right? So, I mean, they were gray, and now. President Grant, he was actually General Grant, you know, he won the Civil War when Lee surrendered over to him, okay? So anyway, he lived in Galena. That's where he was, in Galena, Illinois. And this was years ago. I went on his property dressed in a, um, a Confederate uniform. And, you know, back then I didn't really care, you know. <laughs> and um, years down the road, man, years down the road, I go back there to, you know, go see if he's there, which I knew he was anyway. I mean, I... I mean, I can connect you with anybody. It doesn't matter. But uh, I knew he would be there. But he remembered me. I said, you remember me? He goes, yeah. I'm like, I said, from what? He goes, you know what? I said, what, the uniform? He goes, yeah. 
And he goes, you want to leave my property? He straight up told me to leave his property. I mean, he wasn't being a dick or nothing like that. He was actually pretty cool about it. I said, man, I respect that, man. I said, I'll leave your property. I said, I didn't mean to do that, but I said, I was doing it for fun, but. I was doing it for fun. You know, I said, but I said, it's all cool, you know. He didn't know you were doing it for fun. No, nah, he was, he was mad, but he wasn't. He just took it down. Yeah, he just, he wasn't raging, like, get the hell out of fucker, you know, this and that. He just. No, he didn't want us on his property after. It's all good. Period. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> So by the sounds of it, you guys have zero fear when it comes to ghosts and the paranormal. A lot of people, you know, the thought of facing a ghost or seeing something that kind of isn't there would terrify the life out of them. But do you think you're so used to it that that fear's kind of gone now? It's been gone. And first fear and then like, I don't know, you're not scared after that no more, at least to me. Well, a lot of people, it does scare them. It's like, it does, but no, this is like in this is kind of like you know how people go to the office from nine to five. <laughs> this is like, uh, this is like it's not personal because there's something that we're doing for the Lord and our you know and helping and all that. So, actually, is I don't know, man, it's fucking easy. I don't know, <laughs> it's easy. I don't know, man. It's no, my favorite time is at night when we gotta go at night. I love nighttime. When the, well, that's because they show us off a It's when more. the creepers come. I call them the spookies. Could you describe creepers to us? I learned them about the black mass. Yeah, we had this black mass. It was like really, really, really black, you know, and the sun was shining out. It wasn't a cloud in the damn sky, and you got your trees, okay? There's some trees where you can see the opening, okay? And she goes, look at that black mass. I'm like, what? Where? And I look over, it's holy shit. And I had my camera. I said, pop, 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 pop. Took the pictures. And you can see it right as it is moving, you know, because you can see in between the trees and it's black and in between the trees, you know, it's pretty cool. So then anyway, I said, well, here, let's get out of here, man. You know, because I, I was like, let's just get out of here because it just didn't feel right. I still really don't know. So what we got in the car and we left, man. We got the road. She goes, you smell that? I said, I said, motherfucker. I said, it smells like sulfur. I slammed on the brakes, dude. I said, get the right? fuck out of my car, motherfucker. I, I went off the wall, dude. And then I said a prayer. And then when I said in Jesus name, amen. Dude, I mean, this stink was so bad, dude. It's like somebody let off a shitload of fireworks in your car. And yeah. then when I said that in Jesus' name, amen, poof, dude, it was all gone. It's like you it flew out the window. Yeah, it was gone. You didn't even <laughs> smell nothing, a trace of it, anything. Yeah, it goes on, dude. Yeah, no, I, I don't even know how to describe that, though. Because like I told him, it was no bird, no airplane no nothing I, I just don't even well i don't know what about you the attachment now you ever see it's about attachments man you ever hear about that about attachments here it's gonna attach to people okay now she had an attachment to her okay she lived in this apartment downtown lockport which is like from the 1800s and shit you can tell by the buildings you know and um you know so forth but her apartment was like downstairs okay well, when she moved in there, she figured something was in there, but wasn't sure. So then when I went over to her, I went in the bathroom. I said, hey, man, somebody's in your bathroom. And she's like, oh, I said, somebody's in your bathroom. And I said, here, let's find out who it is. So we found out it was a lady. The lady got killed, man. They bashed her head off the damn um, the tub and just left her there dead, you well, know. She's angry. Yeah, she's, she's like, really? Angry. Yeah, she's P.O.'d, man. So then, you know, she tried messing with me. I told her, she might as well scoot over, man, you know. And then that, her living there, you know, so they pretty, she pretty much was following her. And then that, they, you know, it just, I'm like, I said, Ashley, you got to be careful with that stuff, man, you know. And I can't be there at all times, you know, because she, you know, she was living with her boyfriend, you know, I got my own life and so forth, you know. Would you describe an attachment similar to a possession? A possession is totally different, man. Attachment is where they attach to you. And they stay with you, and they can, uh, well, they could possess you in a way, but that's more of a demon devil kind of thing where this was just an angry spirit. And she attached herself to her. And I'm like, oh my God, because we were having Bible study doing over her mods, actually. And, um, when I, I looked right at her when she came in, you know, she was acting weird anyway. And I'm like, I'm looking. At us, what the fuck? I looked no, in her I eyes, they were black, man. I like floated in basically, like they didn't hear me come in the door, it didn't even creak, nothing. It's like I just kind of walked through the door. I don't know, it was it was yeah. messed up, man. And then, uh, you know, I looked at her and I seen her eyes were pitch black, man. I said, man, my instant this reflex was I grabbed my Bible, I 
Whap, I smacked her upside the head with him, man. And I, I said a prayer over her head, holding her head. And I told that lady, get the fuck out of her now. And then she jumped out of her. Because they don't want no part of me, dude. I'm brutal. And um, I opened the door. I said, get the fuck out. So she went out the front door, right? But see, I wasn't thinking because we were sitting there doing our thing. And she was all right inside there. But then her and her mom went outside to have a cigarette. And the lady jumped her again. I said, Ashley, I said, that's, that's on you now what you got to do. So I told her what she had to do pretty much, you know, and she did that. She kept with it and the lady left her and now she's attached to uh to do her boyfriend's mom, <laughs> which is a good thing. Yeah, I had to call upon uh, Michael. Michael. Yeah. yeah, Michael. Yeah, man, that ain't no lie. People don't think that uh, this spiritual stuff's real. You know, it really is. But, you know, a lot of people preach on it. You know, that, like me, I'm a licensed minister, too. But I don't go preaching on it because a lot of people don't want to hear that, man. It's if you, you know, it's, I don't know, I do it for my reasons, you know. By the sounds of it, you guys are quite heavily religious and you believe in good and evil. Have you seen both good and evil on the kind of, on, in the spirit realm? Yes. 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 Plenty of times. <laughs> okay, there's this, okay, like some like some spirits can be evil bastards, man. You know, they're they're like it depends on how pissed they are, you know. But yeah, we came across a couple of demons, man. One was Jinx. Now Jinx is the kind of demon that gets into your head, and he got into this uh this kid's head. You know, him and his brother they're arguing and shit and. Yeah, that's that was really sad, man. He fucking actually they reenacted the whole thing for us, dude. We got on the video recorder. Same with Barry. Yeah, with Barry too. That's another story. He but um, grim. yeah. But <laughs> when I asked the question, you know, the mom was telling me, and I I record everything on my voice recorder. As soon as I walk in that door, and when we got to by the bedroom, man, they reenacted the whole thing. You hear him fucking shot his brother and him are arguing, and he fucking shot his brother down the hallway, shot him right in the freaking head, dude. And their dad, he went to the bedroom and shot himself yeah, and you hit him fucking snow. hit the ground. Dude, they reenacted the whole thing, man. I'm like, holy shit. So then, you know, so then dad, I, you know, I was in there talking with them because the lady said that, you know, that, you know, they didn't know what was going on. That's when I found out Jinx was in there. So I said, hey, man, you know, I said, let me talk to this thing, you know. In this thing. <laughs> you know, I, uh, so I pretty much, I had them go in the other room and I pretty much went off the wall and I said, hey, man. I said, I'm going to tell you right now, there, Jinxie boy, you know me. I don't play around, man. I said, you don't want me to come back. If I come back and bless this house, dude, I will do it the right way. I won't play around. And they know that I won't, dude. So I told him, I said, if you want to even stick around here, be calm, man. You know, I mean, stay away from them guys, this and that, or leave, man. You know, you kind of, I mean, it's not right to reason with them like that, the demons, but. It's more easy to do that than sit there and go bless a house when you don't really have to, when there ain't no call for it, honestly. And, you know, it's like I do is talk to the spirits and they'll calm down anyway. You just got to be the right person, I guess. I don't know. Right. You know, but anyway, I had them calm. The spirits were calm, everything. And um, so there, that, you know, so I told the lady, I said, you're all good, man. I said, you don't need, you know, nothing. I said, your kids, you know, don't everything's good. So there, there, she calls me back. I'm like, what's up? She goes, can you bless my house? I said, for what? And she goes, well, I just want you to bless it just to be on the safe side. I said, nah. I said, I don't think it's a good idea, you know. And she goes, well, she goes, can you please do it? I said, I'm not going to do it. I said, but I'll have somebody else do it. So I had somebody that I know went in there, and the dude, no, he, he does not know that. what the fuck he's doing. I mean, kind of pissed me off because he's a church goer and all that. It, the number one thing that he fucked up about was the candle, man, for sure. Well, besides like that, that was number we, one, you got to have a white candle yeah, he had to a purify pink everything. And he had a pink one that's slug. Prosperity. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah love and prosperity. But anyway, he, uh, you know, he, when you bless a house, man, it takes at least, it depends, like if it's a flat, like one level, whatever, in the basement, it's going to take over an hour, man, to do it the right way. This dude, it took him 10 minutes. I'm like, what the fuck? I said, huh? I'm like, man, you, you're done already? He goes, yeah. He goes, doesn't it feel good in here? I'm like, no. I'm like, oh, my God, fucking idiot. He forgot I'm one thinking to myself, oh, my God. So there, Daddy's like, oh, 
he told the owner of the house, he goes, just open up your east window. And he goes, don't go out there. I said, with the screen and all, right? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, my God. I said, you know what? And there, Dad, that's when he lit the candle thinking it's all light and prosperity and bullshit. You know, that he don't even know what he's doing. So there, Dad, he left the house. When he left the house, the, uh, I went outside. When I was outside, I came back in, and the lady says, the spirits are ripping the freaking uh, the mold, the trim, the casing right off in the doorways. The spirits um scared what was it her? Yeah, her. Her grandkid, niece or her grandkid. grandkid. Yeah, but man, I seen it. You know, I'm like, where is she showing me? And I'm like, what? And I look at the one where the kid where he killed himself in the room where he shot his brother. I'm looking at that, you know, casing. Then I look back at the other one. I'm like, what the fuck? I, I seen it ripping out, dude. That shit's like, I mean, it was ripping out of there. Every door in that house. How do you find out about places to go? Do you um, do you get sort of a feeling or do you get people um, reach out and contact you and sort of point you in an area? Well, that all depends. Like if you're talking house investigations and stuff, they reach out to us. You know, okay, now like other things, like say... The parks are main to places and stuff like that, and there's people and you know so forth like that. No, that's that's our feel, you know, that we get. It's like, uh, and you know what? I'm gonna have Ashley explain to you really how we got our actually our start in all this. What really got us going? His name is Lucas, and uh, you could tell the story, of Lucas. Make it, you know, not too long, you know. I know. I'm gonna just try to sum it up. There you go. <laughs> it's pretty it's a good story, man. Okay. Um. So. Lucas pretty much led us to his grave and I mean like to the point like he parked like right next to the stone didn't even know it was going to be him we got out I told him hey let's check out this kid and he was already going over there by him it's like we both just had a feeling that it was him out of everybody in that cemetery and then um he was like we basically solved his murder because he had told us everything in all the recordings that we did and he let us know exactly like what happened to him and how somebody like uh, what would you call that like a hot shot i don't know like but yeah they shot like up his arm and then he had an od and it was like his um ex-girlfriend and i think one of his like buddies that did it to him and we had to like show his grandma we got to meet his grandma just one day when uh we had went back there on his anniversary and she like confirmed everything with us. So, yeah, what's funny about that is, uh, and then he helped us because like before him, we had activity, but not like a lot, a lot of activity. And they didn't really want to talk to us like that. They would talk like here and there. And then after Lucas, though, it's like, they won't shut up. Okay. Now <laughs> let me get back to that. Okay. He now, we helped him. Now you see, <laughs> now you know how, like how we're talking like this right here. Cause we're alive. Now, when you're dead, they're they're talking like that too. So, okay, so Lucas is probably telling them, "Hey, man, these people are some good people, man," right. and so forth, you know. Well, you know, anyway, we had to do a lot of acting, man. I tell you what, I had to like you think this is pretty funny shit. Yeah, we had to go in like two or three different Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, Dunkin' Donuts and shit. But anyway, you know, of course, you know, I love getting high, but I can't smoke anymore, so I'll just do the edibles. But anyway, I went inside there, man. She's recording. I had to talk like a Mexican, man. Yeah, there's like a ring in and there, it's, you know, um. Can I get that spider donut? Can I get the fucking spider, that the, the fucking donut over there, you know? So then that's one time, you know, people are like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, and then I had to go in there at a different time, man, like dressed up different. And all. It was a pretty good acting, too, you know? Mm -hmm. I was acting like some fucking idiot, you know? Pretty, you know, you talk like, man. Nah. You know, you know, first I'm talking like my normal voice, you know, the lady, she's talking, you know, she yeah. goes, hey, to be with you in a minute. I'm like. Hey, take your time, man. You're busy, you know. So then the lady left and she was taking care of him. She, she comes back <laughs> up and she goes, uh, can I take your order? I said, and then I'll make a couple fucking donuts. But and she's looking and she's like, what? I said, a couple fucking donuts. And, you know, I mean, you got to do a little act because you know, I don't want them knowing who I am. You know, they won't, you know, so. We went to the other side there and, you know, she's asked me what kind of shit. I said, let me get a couple of fucking mountain cream. Spider, spider, that, that, you know, just give me a fucking couple. She gave them to us for yeah, free. Yeah, she said, fuck it. She was here, just take them, man, you know. I'm like, what? I said, I said, you sure, man? How much? I'm my regular voice. 
And she goes, man, some people like me and Charlie. She goes, there's some crazy people out there. Yeah, when we were walking out, she did. She was like, man, people are crazy nowadays. I was laughing so hard. Yeah, but we saw that kid's murder. He was 26 years old when he died in 2016. And we solved it in three weeks. And the cops couldn't even do it in three and a half years. Wow. So it sounds quite a tragic story, and I'm glad that you could uh, help him out, put him to rest. Shit, it goes on, dude. Oh my god, these it, it just you know like all the help that we do for others and for the living for the dead. Um, it's just so much, man. But you know, I wouldn't change it for the world. You know, this one lady had an investigation. You know, she wants to come over because she kept hearing ladies crying and shit and so forth. Oh, yeah. So we went over there and come to find out this dude named Barry, he was a black guy. And in 1980, he shot his girlfriend and her kid. And he did over 45 Magnum, a six shooter. And this dude, that's the first reenactment they did for us. We, I turned that thing on. So as I went in there, the voice recorder, and she was talking. As soon as we went in the bedroom, she was, this is where I hear the noise. It was six minutes and like 15 seconds into it. Then, man, that's when he reenacted the whole thing, cussing and yelling at the lady. And I mean, daughter. I mean, and then at the daughter, you know, she goes, Alyssa's there. He goes, I don't give a fuck. You know, this and that. The other day you hear him click that gun back, man. He dry fires it. Then you hear him click it back again. No dry fire. You hear him click it back again. You hear a boom. I'm like, oh, my God. And then, you know, then he took the gun just. What I'm getting out of it from you know listening to it, he had it up to her chin, man. I definitely think he put yeah. it. Yeah, and he said, "Look, he goes, look at me now," nah. and he said, "Boom!" Shot her again. I said, "You fucking cocksucker!" When I heard that, man, I went back there. I got so pissed off, man. You don't do that shit. Was that the spirit um, talking to you and telling you um, visually? Was he, um, or was it just like he was telling you what he had done? Is that correct? He actually reenacted the whole thing, man. So was it what it? Was it the spirits though? Was it the the spirit? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's a bad. He's a bad guy, man. Then he after he killed them too, he hung himself in the bathroom. Yeah, he's the one I was talking about earlier, the Grim Reaper. Yeah, he, right on the door, dude. Right where he hung himself. It's literally yeah. like a Grim Reaper in the door. Yeah, this dude, he had the ground around me and her shaking. And I mean, I'm like, really, dude? I said, you don't scare me, man. I said, I live in a freaking haunted house. And as soon as I said that, it stopped. I know, she's trying to tell us it was a train. I said, fucking... I'm like, I live behind a train. He does. I said, the train's way the hell, way, way over. Wait, I mean, like a mile away, We don't man. feel that shit. Yeah, so, you know, and there, there you can hear him running across by me. Do you see these um, things, like, reenacted right in front of you physically, like, with your own eyes and ears? Or are they more, like, in your mind? You can actually... Put it he in your mind. Pay, yeah, and, yeah I, can, I can put it in sure. my mind and I can I picture how it all went down, everything. And and what I see is I'm right on. And he pretty much puts himself in that type of position. Yeah. And actually pretty cool. You know, would you class yourself as a medium or a clairvoyant? I would go with kind of like a medium um, that um, well, like a wizard type. Harry Potter. Not the kind that where you do spells and shit. You know, there's two meanings to the wizard. Yeah, the one that's helpful. Yeah, the one that's helpful and is very good at what he does, you know, and stuff like that. But, yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool doing it, man. I Like I said, I wouldn't change it for the world. You guys sound very passionate about what you do. Thanks. Yes. I appreciate for it. For sure. So have you um, ever had any moments where um, you felt like they're trying to control the situation and trying to um, cause harm to you? Uh, or do you have like protocols where you can um, stop them from doing anything? Because like, we hear of things where spirits will pick up um, objects and throw them at people. Um, have, you, have you ever had those encounters where they have tried to do you harm before? Yeah, a couple of times. To me, they ain't nothing but little punk asses, okay? That's the way I look at it. You want those throw something at me, motherfucker, I'll throw it back at you. You know, that's just how that goes. I'll throw it back at him, you know. I mean, I don't care. I'll throw it back at him. Or, you know, it's like that Barry dude, the one that killed the, okay, the dude that killed him. He threw me against the wall, too. And I'm like, really? That's all you got? But that Barry dude, okay, now the, he had the ladies trapped, okay? And them poor souls, man, they were getting 
there. It's like a uh, residual haunt. He was killing them every damn yeah, night. Every day. The same time, man, for 40 years, I couldn't take that dude. So I busted through the wall, man. I, I, I didn't care what she said, man. I don't, you know, whatever. <laughs> but I busted through that wall and she was recording it. You seen the two seen orbs. The two orbs come they out. come, they went like this and then they went, ooh, they went in the living room. So I went in the living room. And that Barry dude, you can see a shadow walking around. I said, get the fuck, you better stay over there. And uh, so then the two ladies, I said, stay by me. So they stayed by me. And you could tell, I could tell they were scared. I said, don't be scared. I said, he won't come near me. So there's that. I'm walking with him and he's over there, like, you know, behind me. He said, you can hear him. Boom, boom. I said, shut the fuck up. I said, go in the fucking bathroom and go hang around, brother. I said, nobody wants you around here. I said, your damage is done, dude. I said, you're done torturing these people. So then I took them. We took them out the door. I said, hey, either go towards the light or I said, go your own way, but don't follow us home. You know, and they, they went their own way. They didn't go towards the light or else we would have felt it. But they did go their own way, you know, which I understand. You know, when they're ready, they'll go do it. In your opinion, why do these spirits stay here in, in that realm and not move on towards the light? Well, some of them don't know they're dead. Some of them uh, feel that they didn't live a long enough life on Earth, man. And, you know. Um, Some really are scared to go towards the light to and get be judged. judged. Yep. And then you got some that are actually, that could have got judged and they're sent back here on Earth, you know. And it's like you got people, okay, I'm going to use, for example, there's a lady that lives up the road, well, did live up the road and she was in the house and she shot herself this is just for example because this is i see this all the time but Are you seen in grandma's own house? yeah she shot I herself in the dead. head no she is she shot herself in the head okay so that being said she's stuck her her punishment is stuck on that property she cannot leave that property no matter how hard she tries yeah she's pissed at herself yeah so you know that's, she does not want to talk about that she killed herself either yeah because she can't move on you know it doesn't matter if somebody like me comes up or not, but that's that's God's call, man. He has what he that's the punishment for her killing herself. You know? But that doesn't happen all the time like that. Like say if you overdose or something, um you can actually move on. It all depends, you know. You can go somewhere else, but I think that's like pretty brutal when you do something like that. So by the sounds of it, there are kind of laws and rules. Um for, for these spirits, for the ghosts. Mm-hmm. Would you say that's correct? Yeah. Do you know that they know what's going to happen to you before you even know it? Do you know that they know when you're going to die, but they can't say nothing? It's a rule? No, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's definitely a rule. Yep, it's definitely a rule. They can't say nothing because um, they told me I was going to die. And, you know, sure and I'm like, did. And I'm like, when? They, they can't tell you. You know, and then like yep. um, my grandpa, yep, he told us about my grandma how it was gonna be a slow, painful death. He didn't tell us what it was gonna be, and he didn't tell us when it was gonna be either. But he did say it was gonna be slow and painful, and he was right. Yeah, he was right because they know the past, the present, and the future. But can't tell you nothing about the not about the you know the present and the future, but they can't tell you about the past. But a lot of them don't want you to know what they do in life, you know, because remember the one you brought up you choked in the house when you were like however old? They said you died in or you almost died in here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I was like nine you were years like, old. You were asking, did Eight you die old. here? And they were like, No, you almost did though. Yeah, yeah. In this <laughs> house there, yeah, my parents' house, I had to ask them. I said, hey, did you die here? Because I want to know about the old, you know, about the lady, because he's been here since fucking fucking 40s or 30s and shit. And uh Victorian. Yeah. And she I said, Did you die in here? She goes, No, but you almost did. And the bitch is right, dude. I almost <laughs> died, man. I was choking a fucking lemon drop when I was like eight, nine years old. And I did almost die, dude. Yeah. So they know, you know. About all kinds of stuff. Yeah, but that's what I was trying to bring up with the, you know, past and the present. But they don't want you to know about their business, neither, a lot of them, you know. Well, some of them, you know, they don't mind telling you. But, like, if they're, like, what I noticed, too, is this is at every single one where I go, it doesn't matter. The way you live your life on Earth is going to be the way it is when you're dead. So, for example, if you're a good person and you mean well and you do all that, you know, you will move on to a better place. Now, if you're 
like say uh I hate to say it, I ain't judging, but a piece of shit and you're a no good fucking thief or whatever, you're gonna be like that in death, okay? Now say you're like a rapist or something like Jack the Ripper we use, for example. Yeah, he's like that in death too. Don't think he isn't, because he is. Unless his ass got shipped downstairs, you know. Yeah, and there's some spirits. They watch you, man. Even when you're in the shower and stuff. Oh yeah, we oh came a couple. Of, yeah, a couple of cases where uh, this girl had called us up. She was 23 years old, and she was getting raped by a few different spirits. They were touching her, raping her, and and when she because she was always drunk, so they had a field day with her, man. Yeah, it's super vulnerable. Yeah, you can't be vulnerable or depressed or mad. Because they feed yeah, off they feed all that there. shit, yeah. That's their energy right there. Yeah. Not just wider. Yeah, it just goes on, man. Fucking, I mean, like, the spirit world is more than what anybody can even possibly imagine. You've definitely opened our eyes. Um, I mean, we've, we've learned a hell of a lot just from this, you know, short call we've had from you guys. And it is really great to have an insight from people who have that real connection into into these these kind of things because you know the majority the majority of people on earth have no idea what what's going on in the spirit world um other than people that have that connection people that have that sixth sense yeah i connect with uh me and Ashley can connect with anybody i don't care who you are if you're uh you're joe snow on the side of the road <laughs> and you know and you no, know, my mom just died, or you know, I'm sad. You know, well, okay, sit down, buddy. Okay, just mm -hmm. take a seat. Let's connect with her. Let's connect with her. We'll <laughs> connect with her, man. And a lot of people can't do that, dude. And we'll connect with her. And um, dude, to be crying up the fucking river, man. I see it all the time. But uh, you know, I mean, I ain't saying nothing against that because I just see it all the time, you know. So it's normal to me. It's like a day at the office. I don't know. They yeah, yeah, you know, but I could tell him to let it out. Going back to Lucas, would you describe him as your spirit guide? Yeah, man. Yeah, He's definitely, a good kid. Because he, he definitely follows us and he stays with us. Yeah, because when I dropped dead, man, I came back over here. It was like three months later. And, you know, I was, man, my chest, all my bones were busted, dude. My heart, I mean, I got a pacemaker, the fibula, all that shit, dude. And, I mean, I could, you know, when I came back in here, it's all this dude, dude was doing was cussing and fucking hollering. So we shut up, man. I said, I ain't supposed to be getting upset. I don't give a flying fuck, you know, this and that. So then he goes in the kitchen. I said, somebody do something to this motherfucker. You're like, Lucas. <laughs> yeah. I said, what the fuck? I said, Lucas, do something to this motherfucker. Man, how be damn he went in there. That Lucas beat the fuck out of him, dude. He, he was, he was either, he was either pounding him in his chest or he was fucking choking him. One yeah, or the other. He was choking him because like he was over here. <laughs> Yeah, the dude was fucked up, man. He walked back out. He said, uh, <gasps> I said, dumb fuck. I told you not to fuck with me, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, but Lucas is pretty funny, man. We're on this trail looking for the cemetery. And I got pissed off, man, because I heard my mom screaming for help and shit, dude. <laughs> I mean, I got pissed off. I see motherfuckers. Wait till I die, right? <laughs> but anyway, uh, there's people jogging on this trail on their bikes. I'm like, I say, Lucas. I said, man, I said, Fucking knock one of them off the bike, man. He wouldn't knock them off the bike, okay? Yeah, we were just like joking when I'm like, trip one of these, man. Yeah, so then, you know, there's a couple jogging. There's a lady and a dude jogging. I said, well, at least do something with them. I don't chase know. After them yeah, something. chase after do something. He went up to the dude, man. He said something in that fucking dude's ear. Man, that dude said, he booked, dude, man. he was gone. He said, Whoa. I mean, he, I never seen nobody run so fucking fast, <laughs> He man. left his lady. And she's like, what the fuck? Where you going? This dude didn't even look back, man. He took off. He went around that corner, man. He, he was gone. <laughs> and she's like, where the hell is this dude even at? We're cracking up laughing. Right? We knew what happened. It sounds like you guys can have some fun with this as well, as well as as, as serious as you are about it. It sounds like, uh, yeah, you can have a lot of fun. <laughs> that's you know, what's awesome about it. Yeah. yeah. You, yeah you that's what makes fun. us us, too. Yeah. We have fun doing it. And, and we get it done. And we do it right. <laughs> yeah. There's no doubt in my mind. We do it right. And there, there's, you know, then I see people trying to do what I do and what Ashley does. And, you know, I got to call them out, man. You can't be us. Dude. You can't do what we do. You know what I'm trying to say? You could try. We're different than everybody good. else. That's what makes us different, you know? Like I said, there's people out there, man, they, they just, yeah, you got a couple ghosts in your house. And um, spirits aren't just going to talk to anybody. Yeah. 
That too. Like, they're not just going to talk to anyone. And I see a lot of them all over the fucking place, dude. I mean, all over, like, horse shit. And we know this from bringing guests with us, and they won't talk or say a word, not even to us. Like, because they don't want, because they're there. Like, our guest is there, and they don't want to talk. Yeah. So they're just like, they're like really iffy about people, too, that they want to talk to. Yeah, but, you know, we make them sign waivers and shit. They want to come with us. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> now, if they come with, I ain't going to take them to some Joe Schmo place, man. I'll take them to the one of the most haunted places there is. Which almost every. You know, I mean, I don't play around. Six, I'll take them there, and I see how they act, and I'll watch them. And if they act like a fool, man, it's time for you to cruise, brother. That's all there is to it, you know. I don't like the disrespect towards the dead. I mean, if somebody disrespects the dead, man, don't. Don't do it around me because I will go off the wall. Right. I mean, I don't like that. You know, leave them alone. I don't care how they were in life, man. Leave them alone. They're gone now. Right. Now, if you got an investigation and you got to deal with one and he's giving you a hard time, that's a little bit different. But, mm-hmm. you know, just don't go. I mean, I ain't saying down in them that, you know, you, I won't be down in them anyway. You just got to put them in their place sometimes. That's all. I do agree with that sentiment about respecting the dead, regardless of who they were. I mean, it's not us up to us to um ultimately judge people when we don't know you know both sides both sides of the coin so yeah i'd um definitely agree with that so when is your next um investigation do you do you have one coming up or have you had one just recently um fuck actually we're at lincoln's house and uh are we gonna go back to prison yeah right? yeah we're going back to the prison the old Julia prison which we're is gonna, gonna be nighttime yeah it'll be friday night that we do it it's probably gonna be what's today sunday probably this friday coming up we'll do it yeah we'll come yeah probably this friday night we'll do it and i will go live with it and um yeah so you guys better stay tuned the history on that is pretty brutal dude it was built in 1858 and it's one of the biggest ones in the United States. First, there was Alton Prison, which we went down to Alton. It's always left as a fucking piece of a brick wall. But, Another brick in the wall. You know, but anyway, uh, you know, this prison's pretty haunted, man. It really is. But they won't mess with me. I walk in there. I, I mean, I don't feel shit because they always run. I mean, they always run the other way. I don't care if I'm in a house investigation. Where I'm at, they always book the other way because they don't want no part of me. The only time I felt anything in that prison was when I told you when we were in the chapel, bro. Yeah. And we kept getting like deeper back there and further back there. And it just was making me so sick to my stomach. Is that an attack? Would Would you say when you felt sick, was that something attacking you or was you feeling the emotion? I feel like it was a bunch of spirits around me, surrounding me, probably. And you got to think it's a prison, man. So there's a bunch of prisoners there from 1858 to 2002, dude. So the ones that come, go, die, oh, shoot. You know, the ones that died, came, went, you know, and so forth. They got killed there. Uh, I mean, you should see what they used to do, these poor souls, dude. Even though they were in prison for the dumb crimes they did. Yeah, man, they even had a whipping post. Oh, they had fucking, yeah, they had them up on top of the buildings, man, with these fucking <laughs> things. They were whipping the fuck out. You know what's even more racist is they had two black people up there doing it too, man. Wow. I'm like. And that was during the Civil War era, dude. They had a lot of Confederate soldiers that were there, too, that they killed off actually three a day. They would, they killed them off, and they buried them in unknown, like, in the, behind the prison, in unknown fucking graves and shit. Yeah, unmarked ones. Yeah, well, the only thing they had was a wooden stake, and that was in the 18, 1800s, really. So that's going to decay anyway within, what, a few months or whatever? And a lot of people there died of tuberculosis. Yeah, hundreds and hundreds of tuberculosis. It's like at Lincoln's house, man. Now, I'm going to tell you this. I had to get out of there, too. We were supposed to do an investigation on that house, which is once in a lifetime thing. But we already talked to Lincoln the night before, so by outside his house, so it didn't really bother me. When we went in there, (laughs) this dude was reminding people, okay, I guess you got get it. You're doing a tour. But he's sitting there, how Lincoln died. You know, he got shot in the fucking head, this and that. Then we walk, and, you know, I mean, I heard it a couple of times from, you know, within the years of going down there. And then they said, this is where little Willie or Tad, one of them, died in this room here. 
that right there does oh it just pissed me off yeah, dude. they don't know exactly what yeah it kind of pissed me off besides that you don't you're reminding these you're reminding lincolns these people of it and then you're not even saying the right shit either yeah and then you know mr lincoln president lincoln was right next to me i'm like oh my god i felt him he's fucking tall dude i'm like well you know he didn't mean he wasn't meaning me no harm or nothing he was just following me around and he knew because they know how you feel and he knew that i was kind of pissed off about all that yeah, they were making me shake. I had to get Yeah, man. I'm like, man, that's, I'm sorry, Mr. Lincoln, man. I mean, I, I really am. I don't I, I mean, you know, go haunt that motherfucker. I mean, really, that'll quit him to do it. You know, quit doing it. Well, it sure made the one quit over at Belisca. Yeah. Sounds like you guys have had some crazy experiences. Uh just to close off the show, could you tell us what is your favorite location you've ever been to the most active location i gotta say every fucking place we go to to be honest with you Uh, but the most active active like hmm. my favorite was definitely ox sable when we first did it for the first time and we seen the you know okay yeah yeah ox sable cemetery is one of the most haunted in illinois and uh you know, we seen we did see a phantom police car, man, because we were like right up on it and the shit. It was I mean, this up. like car even had the like spotlight on us and everything. You could see him like back up and go into his like parking spot and yeah. turn off his lights. We got up there and it ain't nothing. Really? My mom was like, "Get in the fucking car right now." <laughs> you know, before that, there's like a bridge you gotta go over, and already there was red eyes or green eyes. No, it's green eyes. Yeah, green eyes. You seen green and eyes? You seen so, yeah. the green eyes. Yeah, but then, you know, we go back. We've been there many times, you know, but uh, this see, little girl. The cop car was to get us out of there because, because of uh, David. David. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he was acting like an idiot. But <laughs> we went through this little girl, man. She likes to play games in there. Oh, she, she was throwing does. dust on her feet and shit. And there ain't even no dust around. In winter, remember, she took all of our right gloves or whatever. Everybody's right gloves was missing. Cops came in there and said, dude, we got to find our gloves first. You had to find your cane? Your cane was missing? Yeah, my cane. I said, I think I know where that is, though. I don't know. It was pretty messed up. No, but, but the cops what? like seeing us, though, too. I don't know. There's just so many, you know. I mean, every place that we go is haunted, man. It's just, it's just, it's like a normal everyday thing. I don't know how else to put it. You know, it's like we can go to a cemetery and it's like, dude, this one actually fucking devil's all around in there, man. If you watch it, it's on the group. I don't know if you're on our group or not, but it's, uh, what was it called? The cemetery, St. Iris or whatever the fuck it was. Oh my God. I can't remember. But I'll, you know what? I'll, I'll find it. I'll, I'll find it and I'll repost it. But it's three minutes and like 33 seconds long. And it turns into like 20 minutes because this devil is growling and it's, it's messed up, man. He says my name. <sighs> yeah. Lots you can shit. like watch the video and it's you can see out, it's man. like. Every cross you go by, oh the bigger the cross get, the more crosses, the more P.O. Yeah, getting. and the louder the growls and the everything else gets. And then behind it, there's all trees around there. And if you look, it's all you see is shadow figures all around every one of those trees, man. I'm like, we ain't never going back in there again. Yeah, we never <laughs> had them. There ain't no way go back in there. Wow. So what, what do you think the shadow figures were? Were they uh, more sort of like demonic or just, just unrestful spirits? Yeah. yeah, that are angry, restless spirits. We just want to say thank you so much for sharing your insight and your stories. Oh, man, there's thank so much. Thank you. <laughs> man, there's so much more, too. Right? There's tons more. So you're going to have to have another episode. <laughs> Please, yeah, keep us up to date with everything that's uh, going on, your investigations, and we'll be sure to talk about them on the show. Okay, yeah, well, thanks. Thank you. Thanks for having us on here, bud. For our audience, um, where can they hear more of your uh, more of your stuff? Go to um, Gary Muckett Senior on here on Facebook, or go to uh, English Fire Paranormal. Paranormal. We got a page and we got a group too. Mm-hmm. Join the group, yeah. Or Gravestones in America <laughs> on that too. Uh, our ghost stories, our ghost stories, yeah. I own a bunch of them, man. So mainly, I would go with my homepage or the English Park Paranormal. <laughs> Awesome. All right, guys. Thank you so much for uh, giving up your time to be on the show. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll let you know when it's out and we'll send you a link. Thank you so much. Sounds good, man. Thanks, bud. So, Nige, what was your take on what Gary and Ashley had to say? By the sounds of it, they're pretty in deep with the spirits. 
Uh, would you like that kind of power, you know, to be able to connect with spirits on that kind of level? Or would you find it terrifying? Because I know I bloody well would. Yeah, I think there's a lot to unpack there. But um, unfortunately, we didn't have the time to get to the real meat and bones of it. Uh, would, I would definitely like to hear more from them as I felt like they had so much more that they wanted to share with us. But in terms of would I want those powers, uh, to be honest, I don't think I would because it, as as much as I think it would be, it would be cool to be able to talk to spirits. Can you just imagine day in, day out, someone just chewing on your ear and it's like, I just want to be left in peace. I want to read my book or take a dump and I've got someone telling me about how they were, how they, how they were killed. I think it would, uh, it's semi loopy. With great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> All right, uncle Ben. <laughs> that was definitely a very intense episode. It was interesting to hear what those guys had to say. Like you say, I don't, I don't think I'd like to, to experience the thing, the things that they've experienced. I'm quite happy in my cozy little world with no one nagging in my ear. Or seeing murders being played out in front of me on a daily basis. <laughs> uh, our, little, our own little bubble. <laughs> Massive thank you to each and every one of you that are tuning into the show on a weekly basis. It's good to know you're enjoying it and it's nice to see the numbers growing. It would mean a lot to us if you could leave us a review over on Spotify, Amazon, Apple or wherever you're listening to help us get heard by more people. If you'd like to join us on the show with your own stories, please email us at yourghoststoriespodcast at gmail.com. And also remember to come find us on all social media with the tag at Your Ghost Stories Podcast. We'll see you next week for episode eight. Sweet dreams. Beep.